Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Quick little video today for you guys, but I think it might be kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna talk about some micro tooling. This is a drill bit I bought many years ago. It's 20 thou diameter, 0 0.020 inch diameter. And this is uh, the smallest drill that I personally have ever used uh, or seen. So we all know with a bigger drill, you go slower and the smaller you get, you go faster. However, at some point that reverses somewhere between, I'm going to say somewhere between a 16th and a 32nd inch diameter, you have to start slowing the drill back down. And by the time you get down to 20 thou, actually I would run my drill, drill press just as slow as it would go. And that was the happiest that this thing would cut. I actually had to buy a special drill chuck. Most drill, drill chucks will only go down to about a 16th. Uh, you know, a really small one might go to a 32nd, but this one will actually go from a quarter all the way down to a 64th. And that's what it took to, to be able to hold this drill bit. So we're gonna do two things today. We're gonna uh, see about if we can sharpen this guy up a little. And I'm not sure how that's gonna work because it's a two flute drill. My chuck has three teeth. Normally putting twos and threes together is kind of a bad idea, but we'll see what happens. We'll run the dial on it. Dial never lies. It'll either work or it won't. If we can sharpen it, we will. And if we can't, uh, if, if we can't get it to run true enough, then we're going to drill a hole with it and see how that works. To sharpen this drill, I'm going to use my sensitive work head. And right now it's set up to hold uh, 5C collets. And that's that style there. Then there's this bushing that adapts from a number two brown and sharp to the 5C. I'm gonna take that out. And then uh, my drill chuck has a number two Morse taper. And I have this adapter bushing that goes from a number two brown and sharp on the outside to a number two Morse on the inside. So we're gonna put that in a sensitive work head, put the drill chuck in that, put the drill in that, and then see how true it'll run. So I got all this stuff cleaned up real nice. Uh, my bore is clean, my bushing is clean, and my drill chuck taper is nice and clean. So I'm going to put this little drill in there. I'm only going to stick the tiniest little bit of it out the end. About like that. And then we're going to put the dial on there and we'll see if it'll run true for us. Falls off, comes to zero. So I'll go 180. Falls off, comes to zero. I think that'll work for us. The next thing I want to do, and I've got a bigger drill, uh, you know, to give the example, is I want to get one of uh, this little guy's uh, tooth faces running horizontal, just about, you know, like that is. I don't want it up or, or down. All those give me bad results. I want it more or less horizontal. And so we're going to get this little guy. Uh, the tooth face on this side, same as in the example, we're going to get it running as level as we can. I'm just putting together my little uh, pointer here. It's a little spring-loaded uh, pointer that'll run in these notches so I can index perfectly 180 degrees. Okay, I've got my pointer where I want it and now I want to loosen this off so that I can spin uh, the spindle of this thing without spinning this indexing plate. So, just like that. Now I can't actually, I can't see this. Like, even with my glasses on, I, I can't, I really can't see much of anything. I'm going to attempt to get it uh, running horizontal or level um, by eye with just my glasses on. And then I'm gonna use my phone to zoom in and, and see what's going on. And you guys will get that view too. So that's really not working at all. I just, I can't see it. So I'm gonna get my phone here and uh, see if I can figure it out with that. There's one that's kind of from the top view. 
that, I mean, it kind of looks like the tooth face that I want a horizontal is. Can't be certain from this picture though. Well, it was painful, but I finally got a picture of this from the top where you can see the tooth face I, I want is level. Now from the top, you can't be absolutely you know, certain, but it sure looks close. And then I have a second picture here. And on this one, it's not as clear, but from the side, you can tell um, that the tooth face is where I want it to be. Just because of the trouble that I've had trying to see the end of this thing, I'm not going to uh, try and measure whether this is 118 degree or 135 degree. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to uh, 118 degree. Now I'm going to set my clearance angle and I'm thinking I like the sounds of about six degrees. Now for a wheel, we're actually gonna use a diamond and this is some pretty delicate work here. The reason, normally I wouldn't use a diamond on high speed steel, which is what this drill bit's made out of, but I'm going to just because I have them in incredibly fine grits all the way down to like 600 or something, I'm probably gonna use a 320 on this. And also I'm going to run the wheel backwards. Now, yes, that will swipe a bit of burr over the cutting edge, but um, the alternative is that the wheel grabs on the drill bit a little. And because it's pointed up like this, if the wheel were to grab it, the wheel would go deeper, the drill would go deeper into the wheel. And I'm afraid the thing would just break off. Whereas when I'm cutting upwards like this, it'll just bend out of the way if it's having any, any problems. Well, sight is uh, clearly not an option. So what I'm actually gonna do, first I'm gonna run my dial across the face of this wheel and see if any part of it's higher than any other part. And then I'll know, you know, to start my setup there. Then I'm just gonna spin this by hand and I'm gonna go until I hear it. So my wheel's running uh, pretty true. See here, the four points, thou, thou, zero, zero. It's about the best you're gonna do. And then also the high spot on the wheel is right about where I'm at here. And you see it comes down pretty significantly as I come towards the outside. So it's got some uneven wear on it, but uh, that's, that's fine. We'll just touch off right about here and that's where we'll do our grinding. So if you guys are wondering about all the chaos and noise. One of our chickens had babies and we brought them into the shop, keep them safe from the other guys. If you're wondering what all that cooing and scratching is all about. So I'm in there, I've got a stop set at, uh, this will be the farthest I travel with my table uh, into the wheel. And uh, now I'm gonna come straight in and I'm just gonna go till I, till I hear it touch. And we're just going to give it the slightest little lick, a couple of hours or something. Honestly, I don't even know if it's dull. Uh, can't, can't tell by looking <laughs> at it. So here we go. There we go. Just touching it. Now we're going to come out. We're going to do a 180. We're going to come in and see if that seems to touch about the same. And I'd say, yeah, that touched mm -hmm. about exactly the same. So going to get my drive belt on here, fire this guy up and just give it a couple thou per side. And then we'll see if we can drill a hole with it. So there we go, took a couple thou off of the end and uh, it seemed to be nice and even. Try again to take a look at it, but if that's not possible, we'll just go ahead and see if it'll drill or not. I'm gonna try this drill out in my drill press and there's a couple reasons I'm gonna use the drill press, not the milling machine. 
Uh, one is the drill press has a slightly lighter feel to it, although it's, it's not really a light feel, but it's the lighter of the two. Uh, also, this drill chuck that is the only one I have that will hold something this small has a, a number two Morse taper on it, and the milling machine has an R8 uh, spindle, and I don't have an adapter from an R8 to a number two MT. So I've got a piece of aluminum here. Uh, I've only ever used these little guys on brass, and that was tough. It was tough even with the brass to, to have them work properly. I think steel might be pushing my luck. Uh, just to see what's gonna happen here, I've decided to, to use aluminum. And it's an eighth of an inch thick. I'm gonna see if it's uh, possible for us to drill all the way through. So first I'm just gonna touch it with the center drill so that the little guy here uh, doesn't start off its hole by wandering all over the place. I do have my drill press going as slow as it will go. And I can show you the belts up top here. From small to big and then small to big, that's as slow as, as, as it goes. So I'm just gonna touch this with the center drill and then we'll put our tiny little drill bit in. So there's a little center mark. All right, let's see what happens. There's chips coming. Really trying not to get greedy here. Just trying to do the gentlest little cuts I can. almost impossible to feel what's going on here. I'm just really trying to take my time and not get greedy with my pressure. I think it should be coming through soon though. Well, we made it all the way through. Didn't break the drill bit. Uh, I'm not even going to try steel. I I'm happy with that. I'm going to call that a win. Um, it's funny when I bought these things, you know, 25 years ago or something, they were 20 bucks a piece for these little guys. And just like the RPM starts going down as they get really small, the price starts going up as they get really small. And I honestly can't even imagine uh, how this was manufactured. I can imagine in the world of CNC how this was manufactured, but prior to that in the world of uh, just hands-on, manual machining, I'm really struggling to understand how that was made. They must have had some darn good optics, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are enjoying these uh, sharpening and machining videos, uh, check out these playlists here. You might like uh, some of what you see there.